We're here at about 2,000 feet elevation on the Foothills Parkway. The Great Smoky Mountain National Park is right behind me. And today I want to talk about a unique forest community uh, that we find in uplands in the Southern Appalachians. And that's the Pine Oak Heath community. It's found at elevations between 1,000 and 4,000 feet. And the pine component is dominated by four main species. Uh, much of what you see here, if you look up in this stand right here, is Virginia pine. Uh, other common components are pitch pine, shortleaf pine, and table mountain pine. And so you tend to find Virginia pine and uh, shortleaf pine at the lower elevations. As you move up, you tend to find more pitch pine. And then at the higher elevations, that's where you tend to see more table mountain pine. Um, we just, I was just at an area about 2,600 feet elevation. There was some table mountain pine there. Um, we may hear cars and motorcycles going by because we're really not far from the parkway right here, so I may have to pause a time or two. So you can take a minute to look around. Okay, so those are the pine component. Now let's look at the oak component. We have a really nice, large scarlet oak over here, um, and other oaks that you really commonly see in these sort of areas are going to be chestnut oak, Quercus montana. Not to be confused with swamp chestnut oak uh, that you may find in southern bottomlands. So that's the oak component. And then the heath component, um, if we look around on the ground here, there's a variety of different blueberry species. You may find other members of the Ericaceae family, the heath family, such as uh, rose bay rhododendron a little bit, but really you find a lot of mountain laurel, Calmia latifolia, that's gonna be a common component. So that's a little bit about the composition. And let's talk a little bit about the structure now. You see generally poorly formed trees. You see trees with poor form, curving stems. And that's really a product of the site. Some of these species will grow really nicely on high quality sites, but these ridge tops in the Southern Appalachians are not high quality sites. Uh, so really what's driving this is the, the soil formed at the top of these ridges. Uh, when you look at these soils, they're thin. They may only be a foot deep. They may be 20 inches deep. So they're thin, so the trees don't have access to much soil. They're rocky. They may have a quarter rock. They may have up to three quarters rock, stone, gravel. So that takes away from useful soil resources of the tree. Uh, stones and gravel aren't holding water. And then they tend to be nutrient poor as well. They're at the top of the ridges, and the top of the ridge is there because it hasn't weathered down. So it's more resistant rock to weathering generally, and so it's not releasing all the nutrients. So they're nutrient-poor soils. Uh, there's a lack of water. It's flowing downhill, and the soils are thin. And so these are just tough sites to survive on. So the species that you see up here are really good at surviving on these tough sites. Um, a lot of the soil orders up in these areas are inceptosols. They're young soils because before they can become ultisols and age in place for a long time, they weather, they erode down the slope. And so they tend to have acid pHs, which again favors the heath component. The heath component really likes acidity. So that's a little bit about the soils uh, and the geology, the topography, the elevation. Now, the other really important thing to think about when you think about these forest communities is disturbances. And so really, because these are dry forests with species like pitch pine, the name kind of implies it has a lot of pitch in it, right? Heaths, which are waxy leaf shrubs. These are communities where fire would have been a really, really important disturbance. And so what we start seeing, we'll see it more at a later stop, but what we start seeing when this national park here was formed in the 1930s, they kind of started suppressing fire. Got some more motorcycles going by. And so with that fire suppression, you start seeing species like this red maple right here moving in where they wouldn't have been favored. Uh, think about all these other species that you would have out here. So if you think about shortleaf pine and pitch pine, they're two of our pines that can re-sprout. Most pines don't re-sprout, they do, okay? Think about table mountain pine and pitch pine. They have serotonous cones. So with those serotonous cones, it gives them the ability to uh, you know, wait till the fire comes through the cones open and release a lot of seed. And so the pines that are here are pretty fire adapted. The oaks that are here, whether it be scarlet oak, chestnut oak, they tend to be thicker barked oaks, so they're better adapted to fire. So you probably would have had a high frequency of low intensity fires coming through here, but what we'll see in another stop here, the primary mode of disturbance here in terms of creating that next rotation 
would be a stand replacing fire. Stand replacing fires were going to be pretty important uh, in this sort of forest cover type. Um, other things to think about on these ecosystems, site indices are going to be low, growth rates are going to be slow, so don't expect to manage these for a lot of timber. They're great cover types for wildlife, for aesthetics. Um, it's going to be important to have forests up here to preserve the mineral soil so you don't get a lot of erosion, gully erosion forming from the tops of the mountains. So they are important forests, but you're not using them for a lot of timber production. So that's a good introduction to you uh, for the southern Appalachian oak, pine, heath forests that are really going to be pine dominated right now.